one of the, the really important parts in No Limit history was when Snoop came over to No Limit from Death Row, which I thought would never happen. And apparently, I guess, P and, and Suge Knight worked out the details professionally over that. Yeah. You know, because let me tell you, I've, I've, got, I've got, you know, interviews we've done, uh, stories of Suge Knight walking in Interscope offices and lifting people up over his head. I knew everybody there. So I heard stories when Suge would break the door in and, and somebody had not given him his check and they, he picked them up. Oh, yeah, I wait, heard wait, stories. Wait, wait, wait. So, I can't say names. <laughs> okay, you see where Suge is right now. Yeah, yeah. So the fact that No Limit and Death Row worked it out you know, in, in, a, in a business manner for their biggest artists to go over to No Limit. Like, how did that even come together? Well, like you said, I mean, P, okay, it's certain people um, that could be leaders, and I think P is probably one of them. Um, so he he is a, a level-headed person, um, the kind of person you probably want to be a coach or uh, a lead the team, um, and then I, what I like about him the most is um, not materialistic um, sacrifices, um, and then um, is willing to do the same thing he tell you to do. So like let's say if I'm if he comes to the office and it's dirty, and he'll sweep the office with you. So I think that makes for a, a, a good business leader. That's that's what I was taught from him. Some stuff I got from him too as well. Um, so I, it wasn't no. No doubt about that. Um, him and Suge would probably work it out um, if if it could. It wouldn't. And one thing about P is he's not into like the foolishness either. He's like a straightforward, you know. So it's I think it's more of respect there. What was it like when Snoop Dogg came over to to No Limit? Now that I actually liked that one. That was a um, that was a really good. Like Snoop is the type of dude, man. I, I really got love for him though. Like for real talk because. He's type of he's type of dude that he's loyal. Like if you're loyal to him, he'll do anything for you. Like that's that's why I kind of respect how him and Dad's corrupt. Like they still cool. Like because he he got to a point where he's bigger. You know he's really big, but he could have been like oh, I'm I'm done. I'm going somewhere. You know, but he kept his family around the core ones that had his back. So and that's how he is, man. He we would joke a lot. He come to my house a lot, just hanging out, hanging out and stuff like that. So man, real. Real solid dude. So when that happened, it was like just added to the family. You know what I'm saying? And if you know him, you know him. He's just like that. Always trying to help. Always trying to give back. You know, so much love to Snoop for that. Right. Yeah. And I think Dr. Dre was actually doing production on uh, on some of his No Limit albums, right? Yeah. 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 Dre good people too, man. I, I think, you know, it's, it's just, I think when you're doing it, um, when it's real, you know, and Dr. Dre had a lot of input on it, um, but I think when when it's real, I think the forces come together. Cause I think Dre, you know, uh, I think even P and Dre and Snoop did something together. Um, I overheard Snoop, I overheard Dre jamming to my music before. You know, so it was just like a lot of respect. And I think Dre is one of the my favorite producers of all time, if not the, is not the, but um, definitely at the top of it. So it's, it was just a, it was just a good feeling. To, Everybody share the same kind of passion. That's what's up. Now, you and Maya did a song together. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah. There was rumors that, that y'all did more than a song. Oh, we just friends. We was we good friends, and like I said, she she's good people. Um, you know, you know, in the business, it's like they, you know, they throw, <laughs> in the business they just throw, you know, whatever. But if you with somebody, you talking to somebody, they like, oh, you're dating, you know, whatever you, whatever. But you know, she just cool people. I. You know, thought it was um, thought it was a good song and stuff like that, and worked together, and it, it was it was a good time. Well, well, you guys have two songs together. There's a Maya featuring Sota Shocker and Sota yeah. Shocker featuring Maya. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so was that like a kind of like a trade? Like I'm gonna do this for you, and then no, nah, it wasn't a trade at first. Um, I can't. I mean, she they, they sent me her song. I knocked it out. Came out good. Did the video to it and stuff like that. Um. And then it got, you know, it got so big and stuff like that. So it was like, well, why not we do another song together? And then, so I was doing my album, and then she came, knocked hers out, and stuff like that. So that, it worked out. So, so nothing happened between y'all. Y'all just did music. Good music, yep, good music. Okay, so why do you think there was a rumor then? 
this guy's funny. Every, come on, Vlad. You know rumors, they gonna come from, I right, look. Anybody see a guy and a girl together, it's gonna be some rumors, you know? So, you know how that is. I'm not the back down type though, you know what I'm saying? Like, I started talking this shit. I was on an aisle hook. He like, yo, you disrespecting Fetty? I'm like, so? One of them niggas smack, not, not me, one of them niggas smack me with the gun from the back. The challenges we faced from Houston, from Texas, is in, in hip hop, man. Man, I ain't even worry about Slim Jesus, Iggy, Zay, or nothing. Man, I ain't worry about none of that, man. We got our own world going on of things that's way more crucial to us and to our Texas hip hop culture 